Hi, this is Ashwini and today I'm going to talk about some strange connections that we have between cultures. So I'm going to talk about the goddess Bastet, goddess Shasti, the number six in Arabic, cats and witches. So you will be surprised to know that all of these names and all of this concept are connected to each other. All right. So let's start with the goddess Bastet. Okay. When I went to Egypt, uh, I saw the goddess Bastet. Okay. Now she is associated with the lion and the sun and has a head of a cat. Now all goddesses in India are associated with a lion. And we also have a goddess associated with a cat. This is the Shasti Devi. Uh, she is also depicted with her vehicle as a cat and the day in which or the puja in which she is honored is called the Chhat Puja. It is called therefore the Surya Shasti Puja. Okay, That means the solar Shasti Puja. It, it took place around three or four days ago. Now she is specifically worshipped on certain days. She is concerned, this goddess Shasti is concerned with fertility, the welfare of young children and mothers and life and death and the sun, just as the goddess Basset of Egypt is. Goddess Shasti is called Sati or Sitta or Satavi and she is worshipped on the sixth day after a child is born. So she has to be evoked after the birth of a child after six days. On the sixth day, she has to be evoked so as the child is protected from any death or disease. disease. Now, her protective, benevolent and malevolent aspects are appreciated just like the goddess Basset. Now, this Chhat Puja which takes place uh, about two or three days ago, from when I'm recording, today is the 23rd of November. The puja is for the sun and the goddesses of dawn, light, and the goddesses of the light of dusk. So the goddesses are personified as dawn and dusk and the main light, Surya, is also worshipped during this time. Now, it is also important it, that uh, it is during this time of the year in winters that the sunlight becomes less and less. So, further the more importance of it. Now, Sita. Okay, it sounds a lot like Shasti Devi is another name which is Sita and Sita Devi. Sita is the pronunciation of the number 6 in Arabic. And I have also have read that uh, the Arabic people and the Islamic people also believe uh, that a cat has got six lives or seven lives. Some Spanish people, I think, believe uh, there are seven lives to a cat or an eight life. But Islamic people and Arabic people believe in the cat. They respect and protect the cat. And uh, she is also important in their cultural belief as well, just as Basset and just as Shasti Devi, who writes on a cat. Now in French a cat is called a chat and Shasti Devi and chat are so similar uh, in sound. What is the connection? I don't know. But there are too many connections between these countries like Egypt, Iran, Afghanistan, India and even China and old cultures like uh, Celts, Scandinavians and old Germanic cultures. Now what are these connections? Has history been correctly written? I always wonder. Now the patron saint of cats is also known as Gertrude of Neville. Okay so Europe also has got a cat like goddess or goddess associated with the cat as well as Frigg. Okay there's a goddess called Frigg from which Friday comes from. She's also associated with a cat. Now the, let's look at the numbers 9 and number 6 in 
Egyptian culture and Hindu culture, both these numbers are important. In both the cultures, the number nine represents life and the start of something new. Now, the nine is the root chakra related to Mars and number six is related to navel, that is Venus, the planet Venus. Now, nine means life, the Ankh, the symbol of the Ankh in Egyptian represents life. And the number six is also important in Egyptian culture. In Egyptian uh, culture, the number six is related to the god Thought. Now, the Thought is the god of wisdom and his head is is the head of an ibis, a bird. In the same way, the number six is related to the navel in Hinduism and the navel is related to Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu has, who, uh, has a vehicle and uh, that vehicle is an eagle. All right. So one more very interesting uh, fact is there. Now, what is all this connection and how is, how is now a witch connected to all of this, right? Now, perhaps it is so that uh, maybe there was a huge culture based on uh, naturalism, forces of nature and animals in these areas, hmm, covering uh, also Europe. So, Egypt, Europe, Afghanistan, Iran and India and also China, there was a huge culture which was based on nature and animals and personification of the forces. All right. Now, perhaps a new religion came up and, and this new religion did not understand the Ayurveda, the Tantra and the Vedic geometry and the Vedic methods and numbers that were used to understand what how to cure people or how to solve certain problems or how to estimate the sunlight, the rain and calculating the time, etc. And certain beliefs that the full moon, if you uh, go out in the full moon, you will get good energy. Uh, we just had a Kojagari a Purnima, that means a full moon night about a week or so back in which we have to boil a pot which has got milk and sugar and you have to make it concentrated through the night and people sing songs through the night and this milk which is sweetened is then eaten because they be because the belief is that this milk has got positive vibrations from the full moon now this is very similar to a witch brewing at night something in her cauldron and then uh, this new religion or this new culture which was coming up did not understand all these concepts, right? Uh, and uh, they started associating darkness and cats and things that are evil towards such people who knew such arts, all right? And so anything that a human being does not understand and is different from his belief it is then taken as negative. So such people who believed in such uh, processes in, uh, in, in sacred geometry, in Celtic knots, the Celtic knots and the method of making symbols around uh, altars, it is called Rangoli uh, with the swastika and uh, the, the swirl of the infinity and flowers etc is very much like making a sigil. So they did not understand all of this and they branded such people who probably knew some bloodletting methods in Ayurveda to cure certain people as witches. All right. Now, slowly and slowly, Europe removed or uh, the Western uh, countries or people removed such nature-based, animal-based cultures which were there, which didn't have a specific uh, God as such, right? So they associated them with black magic and evil deeds. So I wonder, has history been correctly written? And has, and has history been 
you know, subdued so that such countries do not come together again. Right? So I feel that there are so many other connections between all the countries which go back to so much you know there's so much there you know you will you will know yourself some things for example um, a falcon or an eagle and a lion are there on all the symbols of all the western countries now the falcon or the eagle and the lion are primarily animals especially the lions which are found in in asia in Africa and Asia and they become the symbols of the crest why is that okay so there are so many connections between different cultures and unfortunately we have divided the world into different boxes and people believe in the same faiths in different ways and then try and impose their own idea saying that my faith or my culture is better than the other faith it is not like that basically it's the same nature based religions which are continued in different forms just like you have windows 1 on top then you have windows 2 windows 3 windows 4 leading to windows 10 in the same way the same ideas are then repeated through all uh, generations is in a slightly different way with the base remaining the same because we are the same in the end there is no difference in the belief systems in any of the world this is what I have realized in in my life we all have the same stories and if you don't believe me then please look at the food habits of all these cultures you will find similarities in food habits between someone in Morocco and someone in India with someone in Germany. Right? So do let me know what other links you have found in different cultures and write in the comment section. Now these are just my thoughts which I have come to a conclusion through my readings and travels. Tell me what you think and do like and share this video. I'll see you next time with a different video and probably this is my last video for December and uh, I will be going on leave and uh, probably I will uh, post some interesting live vloggy type of videos for some time. Okay, see you next time. Bye bye. Stay safe. Have a good new year.